every time I come, you're always like, no, no, no. It's not my fault. It's not my fault you played that video I sent you of me saying that every time you do. See, people come to this for the comedy for me and the life scarring moments from you. It's just the way the show works out. And I was like, hey, this is gonna sound like a shitty cop out, but my foot went under a lawnmower and I can't come to Wingding now. And she's like, really? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because she's calling a camp <laughs> and she's coming to come. Now I'm feeling a drag. Hell, welcome back. <laughs> this is episode 16, everybody. How are we doing tonight? Horrible. How about you? Oh, man, I am just. S- s- fucking swimming in my own loathing, man. It's a good fucking Friday today. Swim in the loathing, huh? Yeah, swimming in loathing. Like fear and loathing, but swimming in loathing. We fear do- and loathing with more swim scenes. Fear and loathing with more bathtub shots. More swimsuits, banana hammocks, speedos. <laughs> I had a speedo when I was a kid. Don't know why. My parents made that decision for me. I had a girlfriend, and I was going to get a male thong to wear for her as a joke, but then she told me she would have dumped me if I did that. Oh. You can you can still get one now. Ride with the mom. <laughs> um, do I la- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, shout out Danny Dorito. Shout out Danny bitch. Dorito. We're back with a hot episode 16. You know what it is. We hope everybody is having a fantastic dapper day today. Because yeah. it has been a Because it is Friday. Black Friday, it, it technically, is, it right is, now. When yeah, you're hearing and this Slim and your stupid ears. is dying, just so everyone knows. Don't support Black Friday. And if you do, Let me come. Get on my pedestal. And if you do, come bring me food and snacks and energy drinks. Listen, guys, you're ruining everyone's Thanksgiving that has to work retail. You're murdering families. Because I get every that, purchase. Like, you want to save fifty dollars on a TV? Go fuck yourself. If you want to save fifty dollars on a TV that's going to be three hundred dollars cheaper after Christmas, Ooh. go fuck yourself. Or do all your Black Friday shopping online, Cyber Monday. Yeah, do Cyber Monday exist. and literally kill an Amazon employee. <laughs> yeah, they don't matter. They're robots. <laughs> have you seen their factory video? Yeah, it's, it's insanity. Crazy. But they're going to have those backflipping robots before you know it. Oh hell yeah! Robots just backflipping and Spartan kicking packages into the containers to get shipped out. Amazon is crazy. Uh, Amazon and Google. Uh, we're not. No, no one's dude, getting dude, shit. No one's getting shit this time. <laughs> two burps in, in under two minutes. <laughs> no, I'm on drinking our, beers. It's so. corn on the. Uh, when I three, drink it's already done, man. Somebody's can, winning. Shit. I'll do the most. No one's getting anything, but I'll see if I can. We'll really see if you can get to the most in one episode. Bang them out. Yeah, mark them down. Who, and uh, yeah, whoever's text listening to this. Four zero two seven dapper. That is four zero two seven three two seven seven three seven. Boom. Uh, the Dapper Dads.com, anonymous submissions, and every way to listen to everything. Literally, we have every form of media that you can listen to us on. You can see us on YouTube, except last week's episode is it's having still, some technical you, issues. You hopefully are watching it by the time you hear this. I'm having a lot of issues. We're not going to get into it. It's, it's a point of stress for me in my life, and this is a stress-free show. We're never worked up about anything I mean, I w- we're very calm if people have listened to your chill. alex jones level of pre before we started this show god that's a lot of pre that's so, so much, much pre so much pre that you it's like the amount of chili he had to eat to forget his kids were in school i want to know exactly what goes into memory erasing chili because i would love a I pot love, it's just the amount he ate he said it's not like a special chili it's, it's the fact just, you ate so much you eat chili. so much chili i forgot my kids were in school have you, i ate so much chili. have you ever eaten so much anything that you forgot things I mean, I forgot I had kids, yeah, but I try to put it out of I mean, my yeah, mind. I try to forget my children all the time because if I pretend they don't exist, then I don't have to send out child support checks. Exactly. Overwork the system, kids. <laughs> Come in from the underground. Woo. Use your silence and stealth as a weapon against alimony. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. DabberDatsPodcast at gmail.com if you prefer to send emails over every other form of submission. We offer you... <laughs> And I know who you are when you're listening to this. Stop skipping over the important stuff in the beginning. I had someone tell me they did that, and they're lucky they would listen to the show every week. Yeah, well, one, you just missed that Alex Jones gem. Alex yeah, so you're, Jones gem. Yeah, Alex started Jones really gem after shit shots. But, uh, yeah, don't skip over because we fucking we need you. How about stop skipping over and while you're listening to that bullshit, you go into one of those forms and contact us. And we let did us get know. two submissions, which we will get to. Uh, one of them is enjoyable and one of them is a nightmare. One of them is an absolute goddamn nightmare. One of them is going to be some a good discussion topic, but oh yeah, I feel like it's going to make us go a little NPR on this show, oh, but it's going to be okay. Yeah. I've always wanted to reflect a daytime talk show program on here. It's been my dream ever since the beginning. 
and uh, five star reviews on iTunes, nothing less. We got a new one, and it will not show me what it is. I, so I think I know you. whose it is because they were looking at it today to tell me about it, and they were like, "It's not coming up at all." Where is yeah, my thing? But it it's says like, we're at eleven now. Yeah, we're finally past the ten mark, so we only need eighty eight more. Yes. Is that how math works? I, yes, we need eighty. I don't, I don't know. I don't more know what you're going submission. for. <laughs> Go get our hundredth. Five star yeah, review. Yeah, 88 plus 11 is not 100. So 444 four plus 222. Two. <laughs> 2 plus 2 equals 4 minus 1 is 3. That's some fast math for you. I was listening to a podcast. Man's not hot. I was listening to a podcast the, the other goes. day that had been around for two years and had two reviews. So in the grand scheme of things, We're we could be bit, doing bit. worse. Yeah, we could be doing a whole lot 16 worse. 16 episodes. And hopefully by the time you're hearing this, we have more. And the only way to get more, <clears throat> let me clear my motherfucking throat. Fucking enunciated. Is get on your goddamn phones well i'm not even gonna get into it leave us reviews the hundredth five-star review will get something absolutely special and the unique hundredth from the dad five-star review will get one piece of merch that will not exist in any other form we yes. will make one custom piece of merch everything if you haven't noticed since cars 2 is very vague and that is for our sanity yes cars 2 is a hard item to acquire believe it or not insanely a used copy hard. a used copy full of jizz so we, we had leave to do it some vague, modifications but 100 five-star review will get one piece of exclusive merch that will not exist anywhere else one well actually when we get to 100 we'll raffle it off amongst the 100 because otherwise yeah the that yeah the hundredth person is so make like sure that make dork. sure that you screenshot your five-star review send it into us so we can mark it down so we have a tally on who's sending. Well, the I've just got them. I don't need all that. Shit. Whatever. We'll put Send you into. Better. We'll put you into a raffle. All hundred of you will be put into a raffle for an exclusive, custom, once one in a off. lifetime, one-off. Covered in jizz. Covered oh, in fluids. Drip. Just <laughs> sopping. It's literally wet. just. We're gonna a keep it in one of those. Cum. It's gonna be in one of those jerky sealers after uh, we cover it in cum. <laughs> a rare slim vomit. <laughs> <laughs> and. It's going to be in a jerky sealer, and so all the juiciness is going to be nice and savored inside of the package mm. for you. And it's going to be, mm, once again, custom. Custom cum. Dapper Dad's merchandise, everybody. All my cum's custom. <laughs> all my bitches custom. <laughs> all my bitches custom, and they cover it in my custom cum. And she's calling a cum. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> no, covering a cum. No. <laughs> um, so, yeah, life is... Life is not bad, man. Life is doing... <laughs> well, not bad today. I've been in an interesting mood because I surround myself with uh, interesting media that puts me into interesting mind states. This is a wonderful segue into beautiful a segue. horrific piece of art. It's a better segue than the segue that the oh, that the founder of Segways drove off of the cliff. Is that a true fact? Can we I'm verify that? I'm pretty positive. Someone fact check it and get back to us. But I'm pretty sure the guy who created Segways drove a Segway off a cliff and died. No, that's one of those. No, that can't I, be right. I mean, I read it online. That's like saying the guy who know. invented the guillotine was executed with a guillotine. I mean. 66% of people know that to be true. <laughs> hey, we, fact check we it. told you before our facts If you are... w would go back and listen to episode either one, two, three, or four, we mentioned that there's only so much truth to the things that we mention here on the air. Yeah, and if you haven't heard those episodes, why are you here? Why are you, Why would you, you jump in at who 16? On this interesting title to be announced and thought this was something Back, great. Backwards flipping robot dog. Dude, that should be the name Jesus of this week's Christ. episode. I know. Anyway, every time I come up with a good, a new, every time fresh I idea come, for you're show. always like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's not, not my today. It's not my fault you play that video I sent you of me saying that every time you do. Every time you come, it's so thick and chunky. Oh man! Uh, you know, I heard a thing this in week in a Wisconsin hotel room. I, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, you're triggering me, man. You're giving me some very specific flashbacks here. Yeah. I heard a weird fact this week that since milk is pasteurized, even when it goes bad, you can still drink it. Um, even right. though it's disgusting, even though it tastes terrible, it tastes awful, it, it likely will not make you sick because it is pasteurized. I have a story that I try to forget, but you just brought it back up. I love bringing up <laughs> repressed memories. That's what I do best. That's my specialty. I am crazy about the dates on like milk or foods like that. Like I won't fuck with Did it. Did you know afterwards. that they're all made up? Like yeah. co companies just make that shit up because that's when they know their product is going to taste freshest to buy. So stuff can be good yeah, for months exactly. afterwards. I know a, a woman who worked at an egg factory and she said when they got them back, they would just restamp them and send them back out. So mm -hmm. you might be eating eggs from the past five decades. Um, <laughs> I 
I don't think it goes back that far. I mean, Fact who's check to that. say? Yeah, you guys get back to us on that. But when I was a kid, I have a fantastic grandma and I have a insane grandma. So everybody's when, got one. When I was uh, at the insane grandma's house as a kid, I was eating cereal. And my sister turned to me and was like, why is it so chunky? Or maybe I did. I don't remember it specifically. But the milk was so old that it had chunks in it. And I was eating that as cereal. Did you get sick afterwards, though? I don't know. I was a child. I don't even have the memory. I just, like, think about that existing. And it grosses me the fuck out. So I won't even, like, touch milk. Or have you ever left milk in your fridge so long that it just gets the... the carton like it like expands s- and it gets real thick and weird <laughs> like i like my ladies i like my ladies like my milk expired like my and thick <laughs> yeah and disgusting when you have to empty them expired thick chunky and gives me a weird feeling when i grab it from the back and shake it smells horrible smells awful up. goes down hard <laughs> So, ladies, if the, if you fit that, if you very fit that category, bill, come hang out on our dapper couch. Dapper, yeah, we have a casting couch behind us now. We're not going to get into it, but someone might. There is a. <laughs> <laughs> but at da episode sixteen, but da 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 fucking game. But da da dapper dads, that's the end of the show. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, um, but yeah, I watched a documentary that I told you about because I was curious if you Which I was looking up as you told Mm -hmm. me not to watch it, by the way. So quick save on that one. Yeah, changed quickly. Uh, I heard something and they were like, yeah, check out this documentary. The uh, singer of this death metal band is crazier than Gigi Allen. Which takes a lot. And if you haven't heard of Gigi Allen, a quick Google search will render exactly what we're talking about. The man was literally insane. Yes, very insane. Ended up dying, but with like... His onstage shit was like cutting himself with bottles, throwing shit at the crowd, shitting in his hand and throwing it yeah, at people, dick out. shooting heroin up into yeah. his nutsack on stage while he's getting sucked off, just like crazy. Very shit. real. There's footage of that. I watched a DVD when I was like 15 of it, and yeah, uh, he makes disgusting music as well that fits exactly what you would expect from yeah. a man that did that on stage did you ever see the gg allen joke they threw on the cleveland show back in the day yeah we've talked about this on another episode so go listen to i don't know like episode two it was this is just the fact that we're just repeating all of our ideas and i've been waiting for one thing that i'm like i know we've talked about that and we hit it episode 16 we're already repeating ourselves Uh, time to give up this bullshit already thank god it's starting to be a drag anyway Mm -hmm. but yeah i was told uh that this guy's crazier than Gigi Allen. So, of course, I got I got a frock of gander at that. So, there's a documentary. Basically, there was a band called Kettle Cadaver, which it, I had never heard of. Never heard of them. Don't understand the name. Like, what What are we working with there? <laughs> like a tea kettle of corpse? or well, Okay, what? Cadaver is like a dead body that has yet to be buried. Yeah. So it's like a, when I hear cadaver, I think of like a medical cadaver, like on a tray coming yeah. out of like the wall, you know. Which will lead into Ugh. my second thing I've been into. Ruh row, Raggy. <laughs> <laughs> That's never a good segue. That one might as well go off the cliff. Yeah, but it's uh, the singer of Kettle Cadaver. I guess that gives away the the documentary is called Dead Hands Dig Deep. I had to do a lot to find it. First part of that, tried to find it on the fire stick. Guess what happened? Wrong film. Of course. And you know what kind of film it was? What? An animated movie about fish in a sea, maybe like a Finding Nemo type ordeal. So it popped up Lionsgate, and I'm like, wow, this is a really well-made this documentary. This is a professional got movie. Some backing. And then I saw Animated Fish, and I was like, gonna guess that this one's wrong. And so I tried to use another one of the fucking things, and it was some Australian film where they shoot a guy in the head immediately, and that wasn't it either. So I had to go through a lot. I won't tell my steps on how I got to this. Because we, d- we don't want people watching it for my yeah, understanding. I would, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say there's some sort of trigger warning. I'm not a fan of that, but what I'm about to get into is pretty grotesque. So keep listening to the episode because we need you and just deal with what I'm about just to say. Just fast forward, do the 30-second leap forwards on iTunes yeah. Do this part. And uh, so, yeah, this guy, it starts off with him, like, talking about how he, like, hopes everyone dies. And he likes to, every time he looks at someone, he likes to think about killing them or them dying in a car crash or, like, some fucked up shit. And then the second thing is, like, quotes about the band. And the first one is, the show lasted approximately 26 seconds. And it's from the fire department in the town. They shut it down. And then another quote is like, I'd never seen someone staple their mouth closed on stage. So just that kind of shit to get into it. 
And I'm like, okay. So they show this guy was in this band in, like, the 90s. Now he lives on, like, a piece of property. He built this whole house, which is basically a glorified shed. He shows all his different, like, weapons that he's crafted, and he's a very strange person. So then they're talking about the band more and more, and I'm thinking, they're not going to show any of this shit. It kind of seemed like it was set up like we don't have... I didn't think they had the footage. Well, apparently they had made a series of DVDs of all, like all of the shit they just had like a fucking camcorder back in the 90s and filmed all of it and does it have that like weird like 90s-esque oh, yes. to the video too? Yeah. that always makes me uncomfortable too because like that's one of those aesthetic things yes. that makes me feel very comfortable because yeah like from a kid, i love you know? yeah i love the the vhs aesthetic but in horror movies it just ruins it because it's so comforting for me and then it's just so jarring and creepy because it's yeah. never anything and there's good. like cool things like what they do in like modern films trying to make it like more 80s and then there's footage that has that aesthetic that you know is like fucked up shit because people could record whatever they want this quickly goes into that. One of the first things they show is him with, like, a needle in his arm, and he's, like, putting blood into a cup. And then a woman takes the cup and, like, splashes it in his face so he could be covered in blood for the show, but it was authentic. I'm like, all right, not my first rodeo. Nothing's crazy about that. Yeah. And then, maybe even before that, one of the first things they showed me, and I, I had texted you because it was, like, documentaries warming up, talking about it. I'm like, this seems like something Slim would be into. And then they show he has, like, a legit, like, crown of thorns with barbed wire. And it's, like, all these chains fastened to different things on his face. So his lips are just, like, pulled up to his forehead and, like, all this crazy shit. And as soon as I seen that was when I was like, uh, actually. And then it proceeds. Not up Slim's alley. Yeah, it proceeds to get, like, a little bit more intense. It shows his background in backyard wrestling, which shows you he's a quality human being. Because if it's, like, anybody we know who does backyard wrestling. They're definitely a fucking psychopath. Yeah, and they're smashing the light bulbs on each other's backs, and then they're just stapling each other a bunch. If cutting is it each the other. big long fluorescent yeah. light bulbs? I remember watching on a thousand ways to die. I remember that fucking show when yeah. we were growing up. God. They had one where it was guys who were doing backyard wrestling and they were doing the big light bulbs like that. There's a mercury powder in yeah. those light bulbs. Yep. And there was a guy who like breathed too much of it in because they did too many goddamn light bulbs and he just like his lungs closed up and he died. Yeah. So I just think about that every time and I'm like, no, don't do that. Your lungs are going to swell up and die. Yeah, they are covered in blood and it looks like they're about to die. Like it's very, very authentic and crazy. And then it shows more. I'm not going to get too into the details, but I probably I actually will. One of the main things he did <laughs> that they show, that they have on video, is some sort of... You know, <laughs> this is crazy. Trigger warning. Skip past this. You know how, like, the joke is to put your balls over your dick and, like, the brain? Like, you remember that? What was yeah. that movie? Um, waiting? Waiting, yeah. yeah. Like, that type of fun shit. Like, put, you know, fuck yeah. around, eggs over easy, all those jokes. So he takes his balls and, like, screws them over his penis. This is when I texted you and I was like, there's a lot of self-mutilation, actually. And you said, is there dick stuff? And I just said, yes. And I was literally looking at my TV. And he it's some sort of contraption that he's concocted to screw his junk in a whole different manner. And it shows it very vividly. I he, just pass out right now. Like, what yeah, would you do? I, I was watching it. You know when you're watching some fucked up shit and you're like, well, I'm already here. So I guess I just ride through this because... At this point, I was like, what could be worse than what I'm seeing? Like, is it going to get worse? <laughs> like your face. He also safety pins a bunch of chains from parts of his body to other parts of his body. Like Hellraiser? Where, yeah, kind of. But he does it to where he can't stand up straight. So he's like hunched over and they're like at like maximum, maximum tightness. Taunt. They're very yeah, taunt. Yeah, they're very taunt. Uh, and then at one point, it's just him. And like they're showing footage of the shows. They like... Really don't get into the music a whole lot, surprisingly, but they're, like, playing it while they're showing these visuals. And it's very slow, like, grudgy death metal. And these people are, like, jumping off the stage and raging. And I'm like, one, doesn't sound like the music you would do that to. Two, there's a, a man hammering through his penis onto a piece of wood on stage. And you're just jumping on the stage and jumping in the crowd and moshing and having a good time. So you know that face Gucci Mane made in that interview. Yeah. That's what I'm making yeah. a drama right now. <laughs> so yeah, that's the the gist of it. It proceeds to like talk about his life afterwards. He's a very insane person. It was 
one of the more interesting things I've seen, one of the more graphic things I've watched in a while. I think he did outdo Gigi Allen. If I had to, I've that's seen, saying a lot. I've seen the live footage of both, and this one made me feel different. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a thing to watch. It's, it's you've completely ruined the whole vibe of the show. I, I had know. so much energy going into this, I and now I'm just, just thinking about genital that. mutilation, and I'm like, God damn it, drama. Yeah. So watch it or don't, and then. Uh, yeah, he also, uh, this is a little lighter, he makes, he was married, and then she left him, so he makes a lot of VHS videos of him crying into the camera about losing her, and then he, so to comfort the fact that she left him, I don't know why she would leave him. Hmm, hmm. I don't. Weird. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when you get married, you know, it's a sacred bond, like nailing your dick to wood. <laughs> what? Okay, here's What kind of th- nails? What kind of person looks at that and goes, I need to be betrothed to that for the rest of my life? She was also very strange. She left him, believe it or not. He made a wood statue of her that he sleeps with and fashioned a mask that looks like her face. And sometimes he wears the masks and pretends he's her talking to himself. This falls into like what you're going to do with me when I die. Yeah, that was that was the better part where I was like, oh, this is sweet. He's such a sweetheart underneath all of it. And there's a lot of parts where you're, where he's just like, yeah, I like to like do this and do that. And you're like, oh, you're kind of normal. But then you're also like one of the craziest people I've ever if seen. If you think having a wood carving of a human being in your bed to sleep with at night is normal. <laughs> I didn't mean that. He's just talking about like going to the grocery store and just. Other well, yeah, he's still a things. human being yeah. regardless of what he's doing to his penis. Like true. True. I mean, we all do things to our penis. And we but not like that. Just, yeah, I've never done any of I that. Have, I've done some weird shit, but I've never done that. So, yeah, it's it's uh, it's quite a thing. And then I was irritated because in, like, the last two minutes, it's kind of a montage of, like, whatever he's, like, currently up to at the time of filming. And it just shows him ripping huge rails of coke. And I'm like, oh, he's a fucking drug addict. Of course. Like, <laughs> that makes so much sense. And it the whole thing. And I'm like, a better documentary would have been, like back and forth like this how crazy he was and this how fucked up he is now it shows how fucked up and like crazy he is now and then after the documentary came out he ended up killing himself lovely so overall it was quite it was quite a i mean it sounded like it was a long time coming just from yeah he he like definitely like we've talked about people who think they're dead or just like don't care like this was like i said it's it makes me sound crazy And it was a crazy thing to watch, but it is interesting to see, like, people, like, people who genuinely don't give a fuck. Like, that man, he doesn't pay, like, anything he got. He had a fucked up, like, childhood, which they get into, too. So there's Never would have guessed. Yeah, there's things where you're like, okay, I can kind of see. And, like, they go to his childhood home, and he's, it's, like, abandoned, and he's, like, looking in there and, like, being, like oh man i remember this and i remember that and is that where there's like, that screenshot where he's like i used to write music here and cut myself and like worship <laughs> to the devil and stuff because i saw like I a weird no i saw like a weird like <laughs> like you know how you just see like those weird kind of like aesthetic pictures on the internet yeah and it was like some black metal looking guy and he's like oh this is no weird. yeah i know what you're talking about no what, what is this. what am i thinking about though? i don't know there's another documentary i've heard of that like gets into like uh like death metal and like depression and it's a bunch of kids like that i think it's from that i don't know what that one's called i'm interested in watching that i was worried that one might be depressing but after what i just watched i'm kind of open to seeing a lot of shit now it opened the floodgate speaking of documentaries did you ever check out speaking um, of dicks speaking of dicks did you ever check out um what we do in the shadows have you ever seen that yeah I I didn't see all of. I think I watched it upstairs. I watched the whole thing up a couple of weeks ago, and I That's thought it the was the one where the it's like, like the New Zealand vampires. Like, yeah, and it's kind of and jokey. they have like a normal human being that they hang out with, yeah. and there's like okay, a werewolf yeah. clan. Yeah, it was actually really really good. They're gonna make a TV show out of it. Really? From what I read, it was I just liked a lot of the jokes in there because I liked the one part where he's like, "God, I hope those guys don't kill those cops because then that means more cops are going to show up, and then Christians are probably gonna be coming yeah. around here, and those are the last type of people we need in this I feel house." Like you sent that to me. Or- something because it fits so well with <laughs> yeah. what we do here on the yeah. show god i really hope True. drama doesn't kill that cop because that means more cops are going to show up and then that means christians are probably going to show up and that is the last type of people we need on this podcast 
Yeah, but also one of the things I took from the documentary is, like, there's still a lot of shit out there that you don't hear about. Like, I never heard of this band. I have no, like, interest in their music. But you know what I mean? Like, that kind of fell under the radar. Yeah, like, you think with all the extreme shit that, like, you and I have looked up on the internet, yeah. like, listened to and watched, that'd be something that would have come across the radar yeah. at some point or another. Like, you at know least it? hearing the band, like, I don't listen to death metal or black metal, but just, like, oh, or talk about, see, like, See, I do, and, and I've never heard of them Yeah, before, I don't think ever. they really, like, got off. I think it was just too much, like... Like, at, like, they wanted to be, like, that was what, like, they talked to the rest of the bandmates, and they wanted to be, like, as brutal and crazy as possible. And honestly, like, the shit with Mayhem is crazy, but that was kind of, like, behind closed doors. Like, this guy this was is at like the live show. Like, you pay there. $15, and this guy's just, like, cutting himself, stapling himself, stapling his mouth shut, like, in front of you. Like, what would you do if you went, if I was like, yo, come to this show, it's just some metal bands, it's like 10 bucks to get in. We get there, and then one of the bands is some shit like that. Quit the podcast, because I feel <laughs> like I can, because I can no longer trust your intuitiveness as a person to keep me in safe spaces. Uh, God, how many are we? I feel like people deserve something if we get to, like, 50 in an episode. Someone wants to count them up and give me hard data. <laughs> Someone wants to give us some numbers back. We uh, could consider having you either on our weird Weinstein-esque couch here down in the basement, <laughs> or we could just, you not, know, it's creepy. Like it's, it's a creepy couch. It's weird. It works very well. It We're going to have an well. intimate live show where you guys literally watch us do this, and I'll have my back to you. And, cause the co- and the I will be looking at <laughs> yeah. you, which is just horrific, because yeah. you really want it the you other way this. around. Yeah. No, you don't want this staring at you the whole time while I'm doing the show. Mm-hmm. And then to top off uh, my weird week of things that I get myself into, I started reading the book smoke gets in your eyes it's okay. by a mortician and she really i'm not going to get into that because parts of that i think are too much for listeners but it really really it's like trying to like overcome death like she talks about every process of like dying cremation all the shit and there are some parts of that where i'm like oh shit never thought about that wow yeah, no it gets brutal i remember um when i was in grade school we had a like mock job fair come to the grade school but it was like and you were like, I want to be a mortician. No, it, and well, like, it was Come like, Come see this body, son. <laughs> well, I brought one here at the school today, yeah. even though they told me not to. <laughs> they told me I couldn't come back if I did it. But you know what? But you know what? I'm here for the kids. Go big or go home. <laughs> they, um, but it was like, our, man, you just take way too much advantage of that fucking chair. You're going to run up and fuck, fuck up chair. your pop mic. Fuck up the chair. Fuck up the pop mic. Fuck up some commas. <laughs> yeah, was, fuck. I was going to say that. Um, I guess I'm not needed here, guys. I'm just here for the graphic depictions of things I shouldn't have seen to make me comforted because now you guys all have the information I have. See, people come to this for the comedy for me and the life-scarring moments from you. It's just the way the show works out. I oh, yeah. Know. People come. No, they absolutely come when they listen to this show. Um, God, what the fuck have we become? <laughs> a shell I, of our um, former selves. And there wasn't much to work with. I don't so. even remember what the fuck I was going to talk about. You had about. a job fair so where you were a mortician. Oh, right. No, I wasn't a mortician, but it was like, since we were in grade school, it was like our parents. So like they came and represented their job and what they do and stuff. Oh, yeah. And the, this one girl in my class, her mom was a mortician. And like, it just felt so out of place because you had like a dad who was a construction worker yep. and then like someone from the a unemployment doctor. office and like a doctor and that and it was like a mortician. A, a mortician. And she was very creepy and serious, just like you expect yeah. a mortician to be. And it's like, it's not that like, it's a creepy career path, but like you do have to be, have a certain yeah. temperament to do oh, the job. Yeah. I feel like, like it's not. what so- else? even compares to that. like you dress bodies up for funerals like you have to be a certain type of person to be able to deal with that you know and especially people's emotions and stuff during funerals like oh, p- yeah. picture that because like it's stressful like what we do for our respective yeah. jobs is just dealing with people imagine dealing with grieving people and mm-hmm. dead people that has got to be one of the most stressful like customer service it's technically it's a customer yeah, service job it, it, really it's very much a business and that's what she gets into it is a very good read it's nothing is like very graphic it's i mean it's real life but that's but there's what, things but there's that some you don't graphic think about too yeah it. obviously because like that whole fucking job field there is, is a story intense. i literally cannot tell on the air about a morgue that i need to tell you after the show oh, and i God. need you to remind me okay i will i just can't have it on the air and i swear to god if anybody comes up to me in my real life and asks me what the story is i'm not gonna fucking tell you <laughs> oh it's juicy oh, it like is a juicy. dead body it's juicy just like a real dad but yeah, dapper it's, dads. It's definitely dads. it's definitely a good read if you want to like learn. It talks a lot about like just how we deal with death 
currently and like how back in the day you died in your home and like hospitals came around and changed everything and just shit like that so it is very interesting there are some heavy parts obviously but yeah it is it is a good read if you're a weird person like me and you like to push your limits i've been going through the um lore podcast on amazon prime have have you watched through that at all Oh, the the like video the, the, thing. The, the I video ha- I keep forgetting, but yeah, it's, I, it's, I listen to the podcast in general. That guy's voice is a nightmare. Yeah, it is. That is the first thing I noticed about the show is the way that he like talks. It, the way he talks into the mic is yeah. very similar to someone reading off of a prompt. Yeah, and like he's it's, got that fucking voice. And that he's makes, that that voice lets you know he's never punched a person. Right. That's life. that's a voice that says you know I literally did nothing but drink tap water and eat uh, Necco wafers for seventeen years, and then I turned into a man, came out of the world, and now I now I talk like this because yeah. no one taught me how to temper my emotions. <laughs> I remember when I had human feelings back when I was a person. I have always been a person, I promise. <laughs> yeah, um, he's got a, a real punchable voice. Well, it's just well, his voice kind of throws it off and then it's um it's like stories about the lore itself. Like they have one about Robert the Haunted Doll, and that was mm-hmm. actually the best one in the series. Some of them were weird. One of them was this like weird um it was a Irish folklore belief that a fairy could possess someone that you love and then make a replica of that person who looked and acted somewhat like that person but did small different things so you could tell it wasn't yeah them. i feel like i've heard of those and this guy and it's like a noted story that this guy was like convinced his wife was like a fairy doppelganger essentially and he killed her because he was convinced she would like killed her in front of her family yeah i've heard this exact story yeah and they and so what it is is it's like a visual depiction of her like with the illness which was later presumed to be like um bronchitis or something like that or like hay yeah. fever like something super well simple. yeah that's the thing when you look at like all this old shit they're like oh my god it was the craziest thing and then they're like it hey, in modern day you're like it was the whooping cough well like, they had one where it was one of the very first ones is about how um they believed that uh consumption the disease that they called consumption yeah. which i can't say in any seriousness because of that it's always sunny episode yeah <laughs> i've come down with a touch of consumption <laughs> i've been poisoned by my constituents um <laughs> But what they called consumption ended up being tuberculosis. Yeah. And so, but the belief back then was that consumption, um, the the like old age <laughs> belief, because there was a medical belief that was like, no, this is a disease. We just don't know what it is. Yeah. But the folk- so let's drain all your blood and replace it with other blood. <laughs> Pretty much. But the folklore belief was that a demon had possessed whoever had brought the consumption to the family first. And the only way you could tell if that person was possessed by the demon is when you reopened their casket yeah. and saw that they had still had signs of life. And then you had to take out the heart and the liver, burn it, yep. and then make a tonic out of the ashes for the person who was currently affected by the consumption to drink. And yeah. supposedly it would stop the demon cycle from cursing your family. W- weren't the whole day so great? <laughs> this sounds like something Alex Jones would spit out on the show today. Now, folks, I don't want to get into it too much, but if uh, somebody you know is acting like an Antifa libtard, you have to take out their heart and liver and burn it to ashes and drink the fucking thing. And then you eat so much you forget. Get, I'm sorry, folks. I didn't mean to blow up like that on the air. <laughs> Forgive me. God, more pictures of Alex Jones shirtless. Fuck Alex Jones. Come I, fight the Dapper Dad's I'll pussy. I'll fight him, but I respect him before he gets I don't respect so that motherfucker. Political. Tell that pussy to come fight me on the air yeah, right guys, now. You're our army. Go tell Alex Jones. Somebody contact Alex Jones. Get us in contact with Alex Jones's people. We want to fight that motherfucker. Please. I've tweeted at him. He's not responding. But then they eventually got into it where the myth of the demon possession for consumption came the myth of vampires because you know they believe that you know you open up the casket and there were signs of life and you Mm -hmm. had to hammer through the heart and stuff like that oh yeah there was all kinds of crazy stuff i've been watching a lot of tv shows that are like informative documentaries i've been watching that a lot i've been watching a lot of uh, adam ruins everything because one i was intrigued because he has my haircut and so i was like interesting and um well, there's, you gave that away no there's a lot of, god damn it <laughs> bleep this out somehow <laughs> bleep the whole thing. Just, just cut the whole fucking thing make a jarring gap in the video um, all the gaps are jarring just, i got a jarring gap for you to look at just, after the show. Yeah. <laughs> anyway everything about this um I can't really think of anything super. I, I know I say this every week, but it's just like not been a very. If I don't, if I'm not out doing something crazy, we are going out tonight after the show, so there should be some good tales about going out tonight on I'm next week's episode. Somebody. It's gonna be good. An ear might get ripped off outside the room. Who knows? God. Um, I've been hanging out with a buddy of mine, and he 
bestowed upon me a very interesting philosophy of his. And his philosophy is that he treats everybody, no matter who they are, with equal respect, which is not a unique philosophy. Mm -hmm. But his reasoning behind it is because he does not give a fuck so much. <laughs> so, uh, here's the depth of it, the deepness of this fuck that he does not give makes him talk to everyone equally because he's like, I just don't give a fuck about anybody or like anything. That. And he's like, and when you just don't give a, a fuck that much, he's like, everybody's just the fucking same. And he's like, and I, he's like, and I want people to know that when I talk to him, because when I can look at you and give you one speech and then look at you and give you the exact same speech, you got to know that I don't give a fuck. I always wish I didn't give a fuck, but then secretly I give a bunch of fucks. See, it I would be so tight to just, I like, like to put off the persona about. that I don't give any fucks, but same. in reality, when I, I die, all of the fucks. when I die, they're going to say in reality, he gave so many fucks. <laughs> he gave so many fucks. We can't even count it. We can't even keep them all down here in the dungeon with how many fucks me and Drama both have. <laughs> oh, God, no. Just, Just nothing currently, but currently, I have a lot of things that I'm giving a fuck about. There are so many things I give a fuck but about, right? But aesthetically. But aesthetically, there's nothing I give a fuck <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, I don't fucking care. <sighs> and I say that a lot while I do care. Like, yeah, I don't care. And then I'm like, yeah. yeah, I don't care. I don't fucking care. And then I go home and cr then I drive home and listen to Trapo and cry about it because I'm like, I care. <laughs> all I do is care. All I do is care, 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 care no matter care. what. <laughs> got feelings on my mind is that, that the kids bob version so, i hope so those kids should care if you have kids teach them to care all right episode 16 it's a short one this was ba -da 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 dapper dance <sighs> <laughs> life's getting dark folks you had another story to expand on i don't even fucking remember <laughs> about anymore. barbies about oh you yeah were playing with barbies in the bathtub yeah that's right and no. i came in so i had a weird so if it's one thing the dads are here on the show we are 100 percent anti homophobia racism we're anti everything really but we're especially anti anything that shits on people if you do anything that hurts people or discriminates against people we don't fucks with it at all no. we'll fight you in public so at work i deal with the general public all day and someone came up and they had asked about they were inquiring about a barbie doll set and this particular set is a variety pack that is like barbie career and so there's like a of doctor course. barbie and a homemaker barbie and mortician, a barbie. mortician <laughs> barbie with its own little cremator where you slide the dead <laughs> the <baby>. other barbies <laughs> Oh god! No, the the Barbie babies you cited. In. Oh no! I, oh, there's stuff, there's one specific thing from that book that really hit me, and it has to do with babies. And I don't want to get into it. Can we get into it after the show? Yeah, when I'll I tell, tell you the my shit story? out of you later. I'll, I'll, I'll tell the shit. I'll out tell of the you. shit out of you later, boy. You know what? Give me a couple more beers. I'm gonna be telling the shit out of you. Y'all shouldn't have done that. He was just the boy. Um, but one of the packs it has two babies with it, and one of the babies is white, and one of the babies is tan. Not even like black, it's tan. And the woman asked me if we had a Barbie set that had two white babies in it. Did you ask her why? No, I gave her that face from that meme where it's like, <laughs> yeah. And I like looked over and gave her the E40 with the glasses. I like tipped them down and looked like I just this. hit her with a bunch of memes real quick. <laughs> and she just she and her her I don't know if it was defense or excuse or whatever it was. Seems was defensive that, already. Already she was like it well, I'm just the grandma. I'm just being told what that's what they wanted. It's like first of all, a small child who likes Barbie is not going to be asking for two yeah. white dolls. That and is a grandma not that grew up in a more racist time. Yeah, leads like... me to believe that they want their nice... Given the facts that you've presented, ma'am, I think you are a closeted racist, and I, I would just... like the opportunity to fight you on my lunch break. One of my... God, that sounds so <laughs> nice. God, that sounds really nice just out in the parking lot. You're just like, 1230, line up. That There's six of you I better see out there. If I see five, then I just gotta grab a random, and I hate having to do it, but you know how it is. Just that hot Bobby Schmur to be with me taking yeah. my name tag off in the parking lot yeah. uh, uh, just like getting ready cracking my knuckles getting ready to just yeah. fuck this woman's day up putting on hand, to fuck this woman. putting on hand wraps like charles bronson just like getting all swole and like ready and she's like it's snowing and negative three outside and then they're like we need you back on the floor and you're like god i shouldn't have done that slow motion and I'm, hand wrap and i'm like god that took 15 minutes <laughs> Um, they don't give me adequate lunches. Well, it's like, I just don't fuck with that racism shit because it's like, I understand. Oh, really? Well, it's like, I understand. Neither do I. Well, it's like, I understand that, like, having Donald Trump as president has opened up some doors in our society that were closed before. Yeah. We're not going to um, get into that. And we're not going to get into that. But it's like, it just, it's just, don't fucking do that. If you don't be worried to be and the with person. It, with it being at, Black Friday, I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving that didn't involve you oh, having that uh, slightly uh, racist relative. And we all, we all know it did. And you had to sit there and be politically collect. When they, you have to be politically correct. And then they're like, oh, it looks like somebody's no, an antifa. If, if you have some fucking 
piece of shit, just leave. Just leave. Or call him out. Because families get too tight knit, and everyone's like, "Oh, that's just your racist uncle." Yeah, we no, all have it's like, it. No, but then the older I get, I'm like, I will fucking stand. I will up stand and be up like, to that person and be like, "No, you, you are wrong." Dick in the turkey, and I'm out. If you want us to talk shit about your racist uncle on the air, yeah. make sure you call 402-732-7737, and we'll put your racist uncle on blast. <laughs> yes, we will. And uh, you know, for a small fee, we'll show up to your Christmas dinner and if you got a racist uncle we'll just come in and fuck him up in front of the family and we'll point at everyone and be like you're next if you keep up we'll be like the uh like ghost of christmas past like that whole thing but i'm picturing it's more like jay and silent bob going door to door when they're like hey did you say this on august 9th of 2009 and then we've already referenced this too wow we're really out man we are out but i'm just like i just like the idea of us going door to door beating the shit out of people personally yeah i'm all down for that it's like a christmas carol but it's a christmas fist to your face a christmas christmas (laughs) Christmas dad fist to your did you ever watch holster (laughs) Did you ever watch the Mickey Mouse? What is the the Ghost of Christmas Past? What is that like? Where's like Scrooge McDuck and he's yeah, like, what is the whole like? That's what's the name of it though? Like it's just that, a, it's just, like, just called just a Christmas, Christmas story. Carol? Yeah, Christmas yeah, yeah, a Christmas Carol. Carol. Yeah. Have you ever seen the Mickey Mouse version? Of yes, that? I have. Watched it a lot when I was a kid. That big demon when he's like points to the empty grave really stuck with like me stuck with child. me a lot. Okay, so there's this things is... in old cartoons where I'm like, wow, that was intense for like. A six-year-old to watch. So as a child, I um I was involved with a local theater and gang. A gang. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, gang Gucci gang, Gucci gang. gang, Gucci gang. Um, Next 45 minutes. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. And that's episode 16. Da 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 dapper dads. Um no, it um I would do a lot of like the sound and lighting and everything like that. And there was one show, I was in a couple of them. Um, just as like ensemble and stuff. But one of the ones I did, we, we did a Christmas Carol. And so for the, the guy we had for, um, Jacob Marley, the guy who visits Ebenezer yeah. Scrooge, he, we had like a voice modulator on the guy. So it sounded like a creepy, weird ghost. <laughs> yeah. And we were doing the test cause you always do a test run before you have your opening weekend and you have like a joke show. Oh yeah. The, it's kind of like how we do this podcast. <laughs> so you don't get fucked up for right. but <laughs> most of the time, sometimes some <clears throat> slip through episode one of the recent ones. Fuck if I know. Twelve, I think. My <laughs> mic was fucked. <laughs> yeah, everything was but fucked. But we hide our secrets. And then yeah, I but now we out. can't because we're on fucking video. Yep. Video can suck my dick. Suck it. Um, <laughs> it probably won't even work. But no, and so th- you have your opening weekend, and then you don't do anything for the next week until the Thursday before the next weekend, and you do like a joke run through because obviously you know what you're doing. You've memorized everything. Mm-hmm. And so y- p- me and the rest of the tech guys, we would like do just fucking around shit like during the joke runs and stuff, and for his like ghost voice instead of pitching it really low we pitched it like alvin and the chipmunks really yeah. really high and the dude got ridiculously like triggered pissed about it for some reason because he like took his acting very... my dad used to yell at me and he had a very chipmunk-esque voice <laughs> he took like his acting ve- this this guy he had a habit of like when things weren't going like as professionally as they could he would like freak out about it what age was this this was this was a, this was a grown man i want to put that out there on okay. the record this is like a full grown man and this was a community theater in a small town so this wasn't like going anywhere this wasn't yeah, like a broad- off broadway right it's not like a broadway agent's gonna come and check out the play you know this is just like for the old you folks to feel like they're cultured you know yeah and so he was like guys we have to take ourselves seriously this isn't how we just kept turning it up and then like making it really low and really high and he like stomped off stage and was coming back towards the booth we're like oh shit (laughs) um but in that specific play i got to play the ghost of christmas future with this giant fuck costume and there's pictures of it out there i have no idea how anyone would locate them but (laughs) it was it was a hospital bed that they had done up with like a giant grim reaper hood and it had these arm extenders honestly where you like put your arms in and there was handles so there was like these big like reaper-esque hands that would stick out of it Mm -hmm. and as you know i was 30 feet tall as a child yeah so me with a giant hospital bed strapped on my back is this giant imposing ghost of christmas future was actually pretty fucked up for the most part um and the costume itself really freaked people out and especially freaked them out because the arms would come out and so you'd come on do the cast bows at the end and i would just come out with the arms and be (laughs) waving them at people like this because it's like oh hey he was in the ensemble but i was also the fucked up demon (laughs) like and there are people who still have nightmares about that. I really hope there's like a bunch of kids that were in that show that went to counseling for years after and be like, yeah, there was like a 60 foot hospital bed monster in my nightmares for years after I was in this play. I can't explain it. I can see it. I could still see it. 
You should just have that all the time now. <laughs> just the costume. Just, like just put it on and just like walk around my neighborhood at night, just look in windows yeah. with it, really freak people It'll out. It'll be like the clowns that were in epidemic for some yeah. reason. What the last fuck year. was that even about? Like, Who that was knows? just a. Do you see there's some horror movie coming out where they're like m- making fun of it and like the clowns are actually like. <sighs> We yeah, can't have no. anything nice. It's, it's a found... F- and it's found footage oh, for what it's worth. Really? Oh, never. It's oh cutting God. edge <laughs> film technology meant to scare the viewer. Uh, my favorite part about the clowns was I was driving around Rockford one night in that epidemic, and there was a very large bunny covered in blood, I think, trying to do a similar thing. And so I drove past, and it like, kind of walked up to the car, and it just threw me off. It didn't scare me. It threw me off. And then I was like, wait, so I backed up and I was like, hey, bunny. And it just took off running. Like it did not. It was like, oh, I'm going to scare people. And someone not being scared. And then the second someone was like, hey, bunny. It was, yeah, it took off. And I was like, well, bunny. With, with a trail yeah. of piss between its cotton tail. <laughs> yeah. It was very odd. I don't know what they were going for. But I don't know. People are fucked. Yeah, everyone's fucked. Everyone's so fucked. Let's fuck bro. everyone. Let's fuck Let's everyone in a 50 mile radius. A level playing field and fuck everyone i mean bitch I mean, everything <laughs> bitch every who are you gonna fuck bitch everything, everything. and she's covered in cum <laughs> while i'm she's calling her cab uh you want to get into some submissions yeah because one of these submissions is going to be a really interesting conversation topic which i think oh. not the second one but the first one <laughs> the f- second one i'm just a god damningly horrifically triggered yeah. and i don't even want to get yeah, into we're this putting the, that oh on. god Good God damn it. Good God, good, good God damn. Good, good. God. No, good God damn. <laughs> so the first one was a text we received to the number. That number is 4027 Dapper. That's 402 732 7737. So you could be like this fine person who asked, What is your opinion on gentrification? Would you say this strengthens the economy and promotes shoppers? Also love the show. Needs more full government names. As much as I would love to give out full government names. But the thing is, if you love full government names so much, I find it odd that you didn't supply your full government name. So we could put your full government name on you the show been the for first. everybody. You really dropped the ball. You like, could have been our very first full government name. It is in all caps, which I appreciate. Yeah, so. because you are you get the aesthetic choices I that we make. Full government name. Nah. Just start screaming that. Like that, no one would have liked it. Oh man, everybody! It's weird how many like catchphrases have just been thrown out of our stupid mouths and become a thing now. I mean, there's for what it's worth, there is several hours worth of shit flying out of our stupid mouths on the internet at yeah, this point. A lot. Yeah, That's scary. Amount. I put my whole fucking life out here on the internet yeah. for people with no regard for who hears I it know. or what I think about them. It's a stupid, horrible decision. It's a stupid, it? fucked up world. <laughs> But anyway, so, yeah, gentrification. Fuck gentrification. I'm going to throw that out yeah. there right now. Because here's the thing. We do not need a bunch of white people coming into the hood, opening up cupcake shops and artisan pickle shops where there used to be hey weird man, don't knock our artisan pickles. I will knock artisan pickles till you the day I die if they're trying to. Pickle. Listen, man, how come everything is a dick joke with you? There's like a Freudian thing going on here that I'm not entirely comfortable with. I don't even think it's Freudian, Freudian at this point. It's just full government. Dick. Dicks. dicks full government dicks if we can see a full government like dick Anthony we'll give out the full government name <laughs> i don't know i'm i'm personally against gentrification in the long term of things because it's like the thing about society is that it's built on this idea of communities and throughout what we consider society we have constantly tried to separate ourselves with this idea of communities and something that this has taught us throughout history is that sometimes the blending of communities don't always work So, and that's why you have separate cultures and separate lifestyles. And sometimes you have certain lifestyles that have different countercultures built down into those things. Well, yeah, look at Chicago where like every neighborhood you're in can be a different, right? whole different environment. And like just from, and what area were we kind of generally in? We were on like the Southwest side for the most part when we were We were in like Logan Square, Wicker Park for the majority. So it's like, it's, if you're going on to... If you're going into areas of town that are doing poor economically and try to revitalize them with high price shops to make them better economic situations, it's not always going to work. And and that doesn't mean that I'm against the idea of improving poor areas because I'm 100% behind it because that's where you get a lot of... Yeah, but then you're just shoving out the people who have been there for generations. And that's what I'm saying. That's the problem. I don't have a problem. Yeah, my big thing about gentrification is I don't have a problem with it. 
as far as the idea of making well, it, an area it better. it hurts families. Like, yeah, there's nothing hurts, wrong with making it, an area better, but coming in with all these, like, it weird... It displaces, like, families who have been around forever. Like, it's obviously in bigger cities, like, a bigger issue. Like, in New York, there's areas where you've got fucking, like, your great-grandma had this building, and then everyone grew up through this building, and now they want to buy that building. Or they just turn make it into you, a fucking Jamba Juice or something. Yeah, you or know? just turn it into a really nice upscale buildings to live in that well, are nothing and that's, like and that's the worst thing it's like where are these people supposed to go when these get bought up you know yeah. because it's like you because okay with this idea of communities there are there is a upper class a middle class and a lower class in the united states of america that's just the way capitalism has deemed it to be mm -hmm. these are communities that exist in and of themselves and they they're not really meant to blend because they work in their own way as an own their own miniature version of society you have the high end of society where they're just throwing all this fucking money everywhere and they're buying all this crazy nice shit and stimulating the economy well then you have the middle class where they're reserving their money a bit more but live comfortably and then you have the lower class which is you know poor pieces of shit like us yeah and it's like i just because there isn't an it's because we put do dollar signs on everything in this mm -hmm. society we we ascribe a dollar value to everything and it's like it would it kill us for just once as a, a society to stop putting a dollar value on every single thing about yeah. human life Especially you know lives well and, and that's what it is is you're ba uh. basically <laughs> Fuck with gentrification. No, with gentrification, you're basically saying this person's life that they have built, this generation of family, is not worth more than a fucking Starbucks. Yeah, it's not worth more than a yoga studio. It's not worth more than some artist loft. You know, and to me, that's what's damning and detrimental to the fabric of America itself. Because America is built on this idea that you come to this country, you have the freedom to choose whatever you want to do and make yourself successful with it or be unsuccessful with it, depending on how much hard work you want to put into yeah. it. Some of us are born into bad situations and we can't help those situations where we come from yeah. it d and that doesn't mean that these people who live in these impoverished situations deserve to be treated like lesser citizens or lesser people just because they don't have as much money as somebody else they deserve their their culture their family their right to live wherever they choose just as much as anybody else does yeah exactly and that's my problem with it my big thing and this is like completely different from what some people face but just for like my real life perspective on it it's like downtown rockford i grew up right on the cusp of downtown rockford i've been there waterfront all that shit for my whole life and when I turned 21 and could go down to the bars down there, I would constantly ask people, like, yo, you want to meet me downtown? And I had, like, my friends that I'd go out with, and then people, anytime someone was like, hey, I want to drink with you, you sound like fun, you're always going so wild. And I'm like, come downtown, and they'd be like, well, I don't want to get, like, stabbed or shot. I don't want to get shot. Yeah. Fucking hate Which that. Which I literally, like, I lived on 6th Street by Uncle Nick's for probably 20 years off and on. And when I was 21, I would leave my house walk downtown to like kryptonite which is gone now which is what i'm about to get into as well and i'd walk back all times of the year all like, i'm leaving the bar at two no I'm trouble stopping at uncle nick's i'm going i get home at like three never had an incident never never you might have people yelling i had people yell things at me all the time yeah but like if Fucking you mind case. your own business like it's, yeah it's... never had it by myself at two in the morning drunk as shit like the perfect person to rob or confront or fuck with in any sense and you just get some dumb kids yelling out of a car or something. Well, it's like we were talking about on the last episode. You know, not every – there are a few crazies out there, but not everybody in the general populace is out to see you get harmed under you, you know, because yeah. other people don't want to be fucked with. Yeah, so and why you get like a lot of – you get like a lot of homeless people and shit. Sometimes they're aggressive, like go to the ATM and take out $20 and you just got to be like, no, I'm not going to do that. It's yeah, you just have to be firm with them. Yeah. But – so I went down there all the time, went to, like, my favorite bars, and in the past couple years with, like, the city market, which I enjoy going to, I like being outside and drinking, but that is, like, specifically. It's, it's a yuppie fest. Yeah. And these are the people who, besides that, will not go downtown. Like yeah. I said, would not oh, come because no, they're they going to get stabbed or shot. And then you open up shit. Kryptonite Clothes, one of my favorite bars ever. R.I.P. Kryptonite. Great to me. All the people that work there loved me. I loved all of them. One of my favorite bars. Now it is <clears throat> a coffee shop where it's it literally when they're going to open it. I was hoping it would be another venue like some something where like kids can go see shows and you can have a bar too. It was set up perfectly. Now it's some fucking coffee shop. And they said in the next couple of years, they want to open up two more very upscale restaurants. And this coffee shop isn't like fucking 
hop in and get a cup of coffee. It's like a $12 cup of coffee, and it's a very nice experience, and it's very classy and upscale. Upscale, 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 everything. Just and like that's what Taco I can't Betty's, fucking stand. Uh, fuck Taco Betty's. Which I fucking... Everyone knows I go to Los Portales. Some of the best food you'll ever get at some of the best prices, served by some of the best people. We, open, we up, might have up, to make a trip tonight. I'll be there tonight. I know that much. Open up until like 3 or 4 in the morning. Something like Same that, Same with yeah. like Uncle Nick's. Those two places are great. Taco Betty's opens up $9 for two tacos. Which is, and and they they're small line. fucking street tacos. Too. Yeah, bullshit and everyone food. raves about it, too. They're like, oh, it's so wonderful. And that's the other problem with it is that if it was, okay, if you were going into impoverished neighborhoods and making, you know, affordable activities, affordable things for people to do to distract them from the fact that they don't have yeah. all the opportunity in the world... You wouldn't run into these issues, but the problem is you're going into these poor neighborhoods, putting in the shit that's way too expensive for anybody to do, and you're just pushing people out. So you're not gentrification isn't good for the neighborhood. It isn't good for the community. It just pushes people, pushes out, people out so that high priced white people can feel more comfortable in their town. Yeah. And it makes me sick. And, and I that's can't what fucking I mean. Stand like it. downtown Rockford was never like a bad area to be in. No, not and at that's all. what I'm trying to say. It's like this is a bad example, but it's the one I have in my life. Because now I fear all the time that Los Portales is going to close down for some reason because Taco Betty's down the street opened up. And, and if it's – we, we will riot I will, if they start closing. Yeah, I will be – I was going to say something that I won't say because <clears throat> daddy doesn't incriminate himself. But, yeah, and it's fucking lying out the door at Taco Betty's for overpriced bullshit. And they want to open Fuck up em. more – fucking high nice, and high end shit. unaffordable like bullshit CJ's. i used to go to cj's it smelled like shit it was full of it was a nice dive bar yeah one of the best dive bars full of sketchy people who if you take the time one night i was there and we all do it where you like look at someone and you're like oh they're kind of weird you know what i mean yeah you gotta keep keep your eyes you open. gotta people read yeah <clears throat> so i was there with a bunch of people we stayed there till the bar closed we were the only people and he was talking i know everyone from cj's they've i've drank there since before i should have not to put that on blast but i was there and so i've known them all forever my 21st birthday was a shit show starting there well not starting there for me i've been drinking all day but it was drunk as shit did like seven shots of jmo in that bar mm -hmm. so that night that guy was like weird and then at the end of the night he's like you gotta go and i was like yeah man we're just finishing up these drinks and then he's like hey uh you guys want a shot and i was like sure i'll take a shot so he gets me a shot of Jameson and he's talking to me and he's like, are you from here? And I'm like, yeah, born and raised. Then he was like, there are some great people in this city. There which really I are. Fully stand by. You can say whatever you want about Rockford. We have a lot of issues, but, but there, there are, are some fantastic. He was talking about how creative here. people here are, which yeah. I feel like comes from, you know, a city that's not great. Makes you do shit like this, do creative things, create shit. And there's a lot of that that is great. And just like with downtown, like Rockford Art Deli is fantastic. I'm not mad about that. The skate shop that opened, I'm happy that that's there. Things can happen. But when you open up a Jimmy John's next to CJ's, it makes me feel weird. It makes me extra It makes me angry. Yeah. And then people ask me, oh, you don't want to see it do better? No, I'd prefer to see like a, a Rockford a local business, business owner. Do better. And that's what people don't focus on with gentrification. They focus on these big businesses that want to come in and buy shit up so they can get low property taxes on shit. Yep. My thing is that if it was good local businesses that we could support, specifically if we could support urban and ethnic businesses more than yeah, anything, because it's like, exactly. I don't need another fucking dress and patchouli shop in Rockford. We don't need any more hippie no. shops. We need to see better representation for minorities and people who have a different culture than fucking white yeah, people because selling then you shit. go to los portales where it's very authentic and it's delicious and it's and a i don't know who owns experience. taco betty's but i know that that's not i know authentic. it's a goddamn white there's people another place stand. in rockford that i don't care for that's also mexican food that is not authentic it's very like which, fucking which one L uh, lucha Oh, man. They put broccoli in a fucking burrito. What yeah. kind of motherfuckers? That's, like, <laughs> what kind what of motherfuckers? And it's like, yeah. I understand the idea. Like, they have some food there that's hella good. Their tater tots are fantastic. Yeah. They have one burrito that's three pounds. It's got three different kinds of meat in it. It's fucking fantastic. I was not blown away like people are. But my biggest thing no. is, like, I love Los Bartales. And you cannot tell me that that's not great and authentic. Like, get a tamale at any of these other places. Oh, they don't have them. Hmm. No. That's weird because when I go to a Mexican restaurant... I, I can get tamales, tamales, I can get elote, I can get fire, horchata. Some salsa, some fucking huge burritos for like five bucks. Exactly. Like, Man, when we went to that shit. vegan one in the city in Chicago. Yeah, that was eight very bucks authentic for a giant well. fucking burrito. Like, you know what's real and you know it's not. Fuck District to all the bars that you open. Like, I go to CJ's, I go to Rue, I go to Carlisle because it's been there for a minute. And that's like, that's the level I'm okay with. Like, when I 
talk this type of shit to people when I'm downtown and they're like, you just don't want to see it succeed. It's like, no, because Carlisle is great. And I know the guy who owns it because I've seen him run around the block naked one yeah. time. That's the type of people that I can fuck with who are from Rockford and get downtown and want a great thing and put pride in the city and come from the city and aren't just trying to, oh, they open up a collectible shop next across co- the street. Collectible for what? what? What the yeah. fuck is you collecting Come in buy there? buy baseball cards downtown. Like that, if you'd have told me that 10 years ago in downtown Rockford, I would have been flabbergasted. I would have been like a baseball card shop. Yeah, like that specifically is coming from the city market, which like I said, I like the city market. I like that it gets people down there because then I go to CJ's and it's packed. As yeah. much as I don't like to see a bunch of, yeah, older, uptight white folks in CJ's complaining about things about CJ's. I do appreciate that they're getting their business and they're succeeding. But then they've changed to CJ's public house and now they have shuffleboard and they redid the floors and it doesn't smell like shit. And I get that that is good for them. It's appealing, yeah. But it takes away. Like, I loved that bar when it was what it was. Rockford has a distinctive flavor to it, which isn't like any other city I've ever been to. And that's part of why I love it so much. Because, yeah, it's a a shithole, but like it's our shithole. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. Some of the best memories I've ever had going out with anybody, you... Anybody in we're in downtown Rockford, yeah. just fucking around, having fun. That's you know? like when someone's like, "You want to go out drinking in Rockford? Where, where do you want to meet? Yeah, downtown. downtown. I'll be at CJ's Rue, maybe Carlisle, maybe like I like Prairie Street too. That's a very more Prairie upscale nice. thing, but it's like done in a tasteful manner. We've been known manner. to clear out the arcade down there. Yeah, and that's why, yeah, like, yeah, I get like I know you have the same feeling where you walk in some places. And you're like, I'm so out of place. Yeah, absolutely. I don't like that. Not just because it affects me, but like, I like to walk in a place and instantly feel like I can be there. Like, yeah. I like a bar where I can walk in, and my mine is more divey. But even if it's like a sports bar, I don't like going in and it feels like the record skips and everyone turns and looks at you. Right. And there's yeah. places you go where that's like exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. I want to be around everyone. I don't want to have to look a different way or act a different way. Or see a huge underrepresentation of people in a certain place because yeah. you guys want to have a nice night out in town because you're 45 and you hate each other in your marriage and your kids are assholes, but the babysitter is only around till 10. So we better get these drinks in and be pieces of shit Fucking and look terrible. at me funny because I walked in and I want to get bucked up. Dressed. That's I want to wear a hat, and that can't happen. So you can suck my whole fucking dick. That's why it's best to be in downtown Rockford past yeah. like midnight, one o'clock, because that's when like all the fucking parents are gone, and you can actually yeah. have a decent fucking time having p- fun and partying downtown. And I get like bars I go to might not be everyone's thing. I invite friends out sometimes, and they're like, "Oh, that's not my type of bar." That's perfectly fine. R- remember l- l- last summer, I invited a friend out to the Rue with me, mm-hmm. and they had never been to the Rue before, and they thought it was like a nice sit-down bar, like Oasis oh, yeah. was. Yeah. No, they were very fucking wrong. And that's the same thing with Oasis. That's been there forever. Like, and I love I ever Oasis. It was. It's a fantastic. I don't like their bar. service. I've stopped going there for other reasons, but it's been there forever. I like what they do. Like, there is a bar for, like, everything. Like, sometimes I'll go out, start at Oasis because it's very chill. We talk. Go to Carlisle, get a good beer. Go to CJ's because I love it. Then I'm at Rue Fucked Up. You know what I mean? There's a method to do all this. If anyone wants me to take them downtown, I'm the fucking goddamn mayor because I know all the spots. If you want to go to a bar where there's literally no other people... I got it. If you want to go party, I got it. I'm just not going to go to your fucking bullshit upscale ass shit because I've been downtown since I was born. So I remember all the shit. And just like Waterfront was always great. That stimulated the economy. It was said to be one of the biggest music festival in Illinois back then. Yeah. And like we don't have that now. It's just. It's gone. So that's my like that's obviously like a much different gentrification, but that's what I see. So that's what I can speak on. I know how it affects other people and it's even more fucked. Like I can't imagine if like my grandma's been in the same house since I was born. My mom lived there as a kid. Like it's fucking everything to her. It's all I know. And if someone one day was like, We're gonna put a Starbucks here, I would I would fight Be them. furious. Yeah, yeah you like, wanna that you is, wanna fucking punch the that person is who everything made that decision. I've ever known from like my grandma's side and like all the stories I hear are like, yeah, we did this at that location where you can still stand. So someone coming in, like anything you own, if I, like, I have a house, if someone was just like, <clears throat> and burped at me, I'd be like, well, that's a horrible way to start a business transaction. But furthermore, yeah, if they were like, we're going to kick you out because we just want to really do whatever. Like, I don't care if it's great or if it's shit or what it is. Like, you can't just force people out for your agenda. It's like crazy. Like, 
<sighs> yeah, I hate gentrification. Fuck yeah, gentrification. Fuck gentrification. <laughs> so I hope this answers your question, whoever you were that submitted yeah, that this. That was a good question. That's what we were looking for. I remember I was with somebody who was super pro gentrification and it took everything in my power not to punch this motherfucker in the mouth because he was wearing like a fucking dickie with a cravat. And he was talking about how, you know, up on Madison Avenue, you can snatch up a fantastic piece of real estate property for only $300,000. And it's like, I just wanted to punch this guy in the face because he's like, well, you know, once you uh, run all the riffraff out, you know, they turn into some pretty nice areas. And it's like, you are the fucking problem, you dumb white motherfucker. Yeah, there's a lot of coded words. A lot of coded words. And that's that's what it is, basically. It's basically just racism for rich white people because they think they can afford to make themselves comfortable and only be around other white white people and still have their yeah. yoga and their jamba juice fuck it i fucking hate god i fucking hate yeah it. there's businesses like that where i'm like i just won't even support this because no. i know where it comes from and what had to happen like if you watch shameless it's like that that's what i was they oh and it's a fantastic so representation of it yeah. and because it shows exactly what it does to people and i think uh, people should watch shameless for so many different reasons but yeah. one of them if you are interested in seeing what gentrification does to people the later seasons of shameless are a fantastic yeah. look into the life of what that does exactly yeah and there's there's a lot of examples of it just like when they tear down projects like when they tore down Cab- cabrini green and like shit mm-hmm. like that it just displaces people like imagine someone coming in like eminent domain or whatever it's called and saying like you don't get to live here anymore and we don't care about you or your family or what you do anymore but you have Fuck to get you. out we just want the land like they that's it's so fucked. imagine equating human life down to property value yeah that's basically what it is yeah cheap and you have to be a disgusting fucking person to view human life like that yeah there's yeah there's so much and like you can stimulate the economy like all the shit with downtown rockford they're like we're just trying to make it better you know how much i would love to walk down downtown rockford like i walked down downtown madison or Mm -hmm. something like fantastic but that all feels very authentic and they're doing the same shit where they're closing the bars that i fucking loved like my favorite bar and i know for a fact that bar is going to be some bullshit the one bar that i was indifferent about but was always a very rowdy scene like if you wanted to go party it was mad hatters in chicago or in madison that got shut down i read online they, they want to open up a nice irish pub because there's not enough Irish pubs. Yeah. I can think of four off the top of my head that all in fucking downtown suck Madison too. that suck. They're dark and they're just fucking overpriced. The idea stupid. of an Irish pub is so fucking overrated. Yeah. And it's not even like... Do you even need more than one in a big town? No. And it's not even what an authentic Irish pub would be. That's the thing too. There's With gentrification comes so much like, I think I know what this other lifestyle is like. So I'm going to open it and be completely off base. And then everyone's going to love it and make me a bunch of money. And then I can open six bars in the city and just create a monopoly of bullshit. And we won't let in people we don't like so we can still feel comfortable. Like, yeah, I fucking hate it. It's so stupid. Fuck gentrification and fuck anybody who supports it. (laughs) Yes, but thank you for the question. Like we said, this is what we're looking for. Looking for some good content that we can talk about and actually get into Where we can rant because we don't like nothing. No, we don't like... That person's Fucking probably anything. like, ugh, I just bought up some, some prime real estate and just, just keep skipping forward through the 30 seconds. <laughs> They're okay. really on the gentrification <laughs> thing. Shouldn't have done this. Full government name. Full government name. We just need a ah, sound clip that we can throw in. I know. I got to find whatever episode I debuted that in and just take Chop that. it in. Yeah, forever. Because I don't even remember what Especially to appease it. this person, apparently. We just need like a button like, full, 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 full government yeah. name. Full, <laughs> full government. Full, 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 full government name. the whole name. episode. It's a, a t-shirt that just says full government name. With a button Which you guys where wear you press and it just goes full, 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 full. All right. You want to get into this other stuff? No, I don't because this All person. Right, that's oh, it. It's episode 16. Disgusting. Thanks, guys. God. You, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, have a beautiful family. Uh, let's get into it. Who has a beautiful family? That's what I tell people. You tell I, people they have a beautiful family? I, I say I hope you have a beautiful family. I hope this everyone is a has funny a beautiful thing. life. Yeah, it's it's in that vein. This is a funny thing that we someone said it in something, and me and my buddies used to just when we got really drunk, we'd like be like, "Hey, hope you have a beautiful family." Especially with girls, because girls get catcalled and harassed. Mm-hmm. So it's always a funny thing to me to be like, "Hey, girl," and then I turn around, and I'm like, "I hope you have a beautiful family," or "I hope you have a great night." Literally nothing else, and walk away because one one time I did. Hey, Madison. girl, I hope you break the bonds of sexism and become whatever you want in society. Yeah, shit like that. I used to yell out of the car at girls. That, 
And I would be like, you're beautiful, and then just drive away. So I always like to think that they were like, oh, God, here's another. Oh, thank you. I would like to think I would like that to be a new dapper dad trend. You just go out and you yell constructive things at women yes. instead of disgusting. Build them up. Build, yeah. yeah, build, build them up. up Don't demean them sexually. Just walk around and be like, hey, whatever you're doing in life, you're doing the best you can because you're here right now. Exactly. So that's why one time in Madison, a girl like walked out of a bar and I was joking. I was like, hey. I hope you have a beautiful family. And as I started to say it, she rose her finger at me to yell at me and opened her mouth. And Mm -hmm. then I finished and she just goes, okay, thank you very much. (laughs) I hope you do too. And it was like, it's completely And it's sad that it throws girls off. Yeah, it's very upsetting. Because that's the thing where I'm like, oh... It doesn't really happen like that. I think no, we don't does. live in a larger city as well. Yeah. Like, so, and plus, you know, we're white men. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it doesn't happen to us. But when I talk to girls or, like, see a girl walking down the street, I'm like, she probably doesn't deal with that much. And then you see it and you're like, fuck, they probably do. Like, and you see the videos cities, from, like, big cities Yeah, and big stuff. cities, it's crazy. And then I'm like, oh, I feel you. Like, sometimes there's things where I'm like help me understand yeah like i'm not be i'm not trying to be insensitive but i'm like people probably don't cat call and then you show me a video and i'm like i'm so sorry that that it has absolutely to does happen i don't Here's know the evidence that. in front That's of like my the, face like i definitely was a kid who probably yelled things at girls when i was like a teenager well, yeah we and i did. didn't know that i couldn't do that you know what i mean sometimes you're like oh i'm now i'm sorry i didn't know i couldn't do that that's not an excuse but please accept my apology and genuinely i didn't know i shouldn't do that in the same vein of like I did I don't think it happens like that. And there's a ton of things. Like I don't think people are that racist and then you see a video or you have a woman who refuses to have a tan. And it's like Barbie I can't baby. even make this shit up if I wanted to. Yeah, you and know? then you're like, Oh yeah, there's there's still a lot of work to do and I'm sorry to everyone who has anything that makes them feel uncomfortable yeah. from someone else. Ugh. But yeah, uh Tell people you hope they have a beautiful family. I, my friend said it to one girl, and she smacked him in the face. So I guess she didn't have a Weird. beautiful family. Yeah. It brought up more than we cared to talk about. And he had also just broken his foot moments Ooh. ago. So we, we kept it moving. Imagine getting your foot broken and then having a girl smack you in the face. For telling her that you hope she has a beautiful family. Yeah. She probably has some issues. I hope you're doing okay. Yeah. If you're, if you're magically listening <laughs> if you're to the show. you're somehow listening to I this, hope you have a beautiful family. You were in Minnesota. <laughs> I hope our fan base stretches out that far. I would love for our fan base to stretch. Anyway, here's a hot submission from uh, the website. Uh, it is titled Shower Shit Prank. Hmm. I wonder what we'll get into. Let's wonder read. what this is about. Hey dads, I need some good luck from yous because I'm going to pull the shower shit prank on my friends. We're all staying at a hotel in Wisconsin for a convention, and I figured when in Rome, fuck. I'm gonna make three people whose friendships I cherish, hate me. Now this is... Here's the thing. I feel... I feel liable for this. I don't feel liable. I feel like the problem is, if you listen to the show enough that you submitted something to it, you've probably told your friends to listen to the show. (laughs) So when your friends listen back on this show and they catch this episode after you've done the shower shit prank, you're giving yourself away, first of all. Well, my thing is shitting in the shower kind of gives you away because, like I said in my story, there was no shit in that shower, and then there was a shit in the shower, and only so many people can get into that room. So especially, like, our group was maybe nine ten people total so mm-hmm. it was more of a conundrum if you're with three people two people are gonna be like i didn't shit in that shower and you're probably gonna start laughing because you shit in the shower uh. and i don't remember what we said we would give away but i feel like what we need to give away is life advice because you're making some poor decisions you're making some goddamn poor decisions and i get that while we may glorify some things here on the show that we do cuz let's be real our lives are pretty fucking awesome just the way they are but you're not yeah, us yeah we're the best yeah we're the best but don't okay here's shitting in the shower in the context i had it in was funny and Definitely a story. If you're doing it just to do it, you're going to do it under pressure and you're going to stress out and you're going to fuck up and a girl is going to walk in on you (laughs) with your bare ass cheeks spread over a shower while you try to scoot down. There's there's a lot of things you need to be in store for. You better hope that shit's solid. You better hope. (laughs) Because that was the joke. It was a huge, ridiculous shit. That's what really brought it home. You know when things If are this is just like a weird messy shit over, yeah. that you have blasted you into this hotel tub, every, tub. Every, you will lose friends. Everyone will hate you because I, I would hate anyone who did that in a living situation that I was in ever. I had a friend when we were up in Madison uh, partying all weekend, had to take a shit, and then 
while they were shitting, they realized they had to throw up, and the bathtub was adjacent. So while shitting, they threw up into the bathtub. I did that when then... I was a kid, but with a sink. <laughs> same, yeah, same basic thing, different structures. Uh, it ruined the tub, and we had to get a new room. Mm-hmm. So you have to really think things through or not think them through at all like we did and go out on a whim. But you have too much preparation in your head. It's just, yeah. I, this is the first instance where I'm like, oh, we, we promoted something that the, now I feel now like maybe feel, could have uh, been regrettable. I mean, technically, we're not legally liable for anything because we're not doing we're it. We're not legally liable for okay, anything. Okay, because first of all, this is, like those people be, this is like those people being like, I heard it in the metal music. They yeah. made me do it. And it's like, first of all, get the gun, get the gun, we kill, have kill, home kill. To Take the baby. <laughs> we can't be liable for things that you do because you listen to the show. So if your life gets ruined because of this, you cannot blame the Dapper Dads. Yeah, this is this is the warning forever. Because things just come out of our mouth. When I got this submission, I was like, oh, yeah, we did talk about shit in the shower. Oh, yeah, we did ask people to do that. And maybe that wasn't the best career move for us. But a, a worse decision than us saying that is you shitting in a shower. And unfortunately, you're not going to hear this episode until next week. <laughs> yeah, so the shit will be done. And now you'll just be living with remorse and we'll just be rubbing it in like you rubbed a shit in a shower. Like you had to waffle it down the drain. And the thing is, I don't want to have to deal with this. Like, I I know that the I'm other guilty thing, and I, don't, I feel like we're going to get some sort of proof. And I already saw that shit in that shower and it haunts my dreams. You want to know why I wake up screaming? I'm thinking the, about that the big huge giant shit in the shower. It's like shower. a forearm size shit. I don't know if that's healthy or unhealthy. <laughs> Depends on their diet. It was not a good diet. I can assure you that. But just don't. Yeah, just, just don't. Don't, don't do just the don't things do we just do. Don't do. Don't do what dapper dads do. Do don't do what. Until dapper, you're the third dapper dad, don't do these things. Yeah, and, and it, there'll and never be a third. Dapper there will dad. never ever be a third dapper dad. So everybody, stop thinking that you will be a dapper dad. Yeah, even if when Slim dies, I won't replace him. I'll just make a wood sculpture of him, and I'll just cut in all this audio that we have to form sentences i like, love you drama you're my best friend and i would never die and leave you alone in this world beautiful so yeah moral of the story is don't shit in showers moral of the story don't listen to us yeah i mean it all really comes down to a lot of things fly out of my mouth and Pretty quickly, I erased the knowledge of how they flew out of my mouth until also I'm reminded true. of things like this. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, because I don't even know what episode that was. I don't know anymore. We're so deep into this shit. I can't, we can't be held accountable for this. There's no <laughs> I won't way. be held accountable for anything. I will not be held accountable you for anything. You make the decisions you make. We're all human beings. We're all free thinking. That's one of the best things about being a human is it's also the worst is you have free will. You think about stuff. You live a life. Don't we're not role models, I think to say the least. No, we are not. <laughs> Don't look up to us. No, I mean you literally have to look up to me because yeah. I'm sixty feet tall. I but... look up to you because you let me down. Yeah, I mean that's all we're really good at is letting people down. So like I'm not exactly sure what the problem was in the first place. <laughs> I like your aesthetic. Yeah. Maybe there'll be a video for this. Maybe there won't. This should have been the polar. Oh, by the way, we did that. We need to check those when it gets to the end of the episode. Yeah, we took some. It's a secret. It is a secret. We did. We did something that we have to we check. We did at the end something of the that we have to check. We've done things that we can't take back. We did something we have to check by the end of the episode. Oh, we got to so. check on that cage in the corner by the couch. Ah. <sighs> But yeah, keep keep submitting. Like like we said, that uh, the gentrification one was good. How we Tell doing? Us, how we doing on time? We're at one seventeen. We gotta we gotta stretch it a bit. Yeah, we gotta stretch it a little bit for the folks. <sighs> Let's just uh, so uh, I mean, uh, you that sound like a weird Eminem ad lib. Oh, gross! And I'm gonna kill myself. Episode sixteen, the one that killed drama. Imagine getting you look up. very stiff. Are you doing the right? I got very little sleep last night. I got like two hours. I've been running since like 730 in the morning and we're about to go out and rage after this. So I got to like try to find energy somewhere. Hey, I I know a guy that will give you some energy. If you know what I mean. Wink, wink. Car hand job. We already preed. (laughs) We already preed. Just plays that Bobby Shmurda song into the mic for the rest of the episode. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. 
that that shower shit really changed my life. Between that and the graphic depiction of a documentary I read, I'm really amazed. Yeah, between the hammered dicks and the shower shits in this episode, it, it's it's been a real depressing one. This has taken all the wind out of my sails. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was looking at some statistics as much as they'll show us. Apple, please do something better for us. We love you. You're our overlords. Uh, currently, the most popular episode is Tacos versus Predator, episode 7. And I was like, what was so good about that? I remembered it was my trip to Minnesota. It was your uh, wedding defusing situation yeah that was both fun. good stories then i realized it was witch pussy <laughs> and i'm like well we never top witch pussy is that like maybe that can be the like exclusive piece of merchandise we do for the giveaway is a we literal do. witch pussy I, I was gonna say like a pocket pussy that's like a witch pussy but like <laughs> i mean I, I, if we can get a literal witch's pussy to send in the mail i suppose it's gotta be green right I'm picturing green and Warts. warty. Yeah, yeah. warty. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Warty green. Shouldn't be hard to find in Rockford. I mean, we are going downtown after this. Maybe we can get this prize. Oh, and like, if you have a green wart pussy, come show it to the This show is officially. That is episode yeah. 16, I, folks. I regret saying that. But yeah, I'm like, uh, I didn't, in the moment, I in the moment, actually, it was very hilarious. That's one of my, if you haven't heard episode seven, again, why are you just jumping in? You're being weird. Between bucket hands and witch pussy. It's all we really, those are really the two cornerstones of this. We don't have anything else for you. I'm just getting nice and stretched out. I'll stretch you out. I feel like I've already given my A game for the show already, so I'm just going to relax and let the good times roll. <laughs> There's not... only the good die young. God damn it. Yeah, that's where we're at. You know at. who's underrated? Who? Billy Joel. Yeah, I will agree All with right. that. I Fuck feel like yeah. he's too much of a fucking meme these days, and people make light of the fact yeah. he's like a raging alcoholic. Yeah, just because he drives into a couple of people's porches. I don't get what the big Look deal. out! Give us... Here comes Billy Joel! <laughs> give just us, crashes give us the... a couple years. How fucking old is Billy Joel? Oh, he... 67? He's at the... You see that picture of him where he's looking like Darth Vader with the harmonica thing hooked yeah. up? Like, he's looking, he's looking old. Looks gnarly. But, like, give us a couple years. We'll be driving into your porch, like... Just I've, I've already life. driven into a couple porches now that <laughs> tonight I'm on the way, the way here. here rockford the, drivers the rain don't, was weird rockford drivers don't know how to fucking drive in the rain i'll tell you that much right now nobody knows how to fucking drives when there's weather that isn't sunny outside god yeah we got to do an episode where we talk about uh my my grind your gears thing is driving and we have a lot of i know people bring it up we have a lot of things where we're like we'll talk about that and then we don't those are just fun tidbits how about next episode episode 17 is the grind my gears episode you know what can we fit it in uh w one story that i wanted to hear because i was not aware of and was like left hanging and someone else had mentioned to me was the time you ran your foot over with a lawnmower you want to oh, get into yeah, that that'll that, be that, a fun that would actually be kind of a out. fun story to close out with so um this is actually going to be kind of weird how I think about this story, but this story launched me into alcoholism <laughs> from somebody who was a very closed up, quiet kid who stayed at home to somebody who uh, became more open and started going out more, going to shows and doing fun shit. That is the best way to handle running your foot over with a lawnmower. So what happened was I, when wing ding was a thing, topical. Oh, fuck wing topical. ding. Fuck wing ding. Fuck wing ding. If they do it, ding. bomb it. I was at wing ding one time. People said, heads up. You know what I don't like about heads up? I look up. People look down. I look up. Heads up, look up, full bottle of vault energy drink whatever the hell that was for a while that was a thing was it remember full throttle yeah remember i was i loved energy drinks do you remember von dutch then von dutch was my yeah. fucking favorite that shit was I, so good i loved rippets oh I had rippets were so fucking good. unhealthy i and i've i've talked about it before i get obsessed with beverages so yeah. i'll get on a kick this kid it was pop specifically mountain dew a couple years ago it was the arnold palmer strawberry tea that's not the arnold him. palmer that's the J that's the jack somebody no that one's wrong there's one of those there's an arnold palmer the can is black and it's him like swinging oh it's yeah it's that the straw summer. oh that, that thing, thing is so oh, bro good. i was going to i kind of want to go to a gas station on the I way home tonight to see i if can't they have do it some. i was going to walgreens they're like two for a dollar i was buying i was taking out the Hat shelf and armfuls. asking if they had them in the back i was buying cases i get obsessive and with rippets for years they're a dollar energy drink their power one tastes the most like strawberry. I love strawberry, clearly. That shit tastes like liquid strawberry. I was drinking like five a day energy drinks. So I can't have kids and I'm going to die. Yeah. But I was obsessed with Rippets. And yeah, as a kid, I would just try every energy drink. Do you remember Lost? 
No, what the fuck was lost? It was like it's also like a skate co- skate company, and they had an energy drink that it definitely out of all energy drinks was the best can. Mm-hmm. It's just like a collage of like different fun like skate artwork art and stuff, and then it was like dot 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 lost with like a little planet emblem. I don't even know if it exists anymore. I don't. I think it's something you made up. To be completely honest with you, I think you will. I drank it. Into it. I'm gonna find it now because I had like a hat, and I drank so much that they would have like send in like the tabs or something, and, and you I got, got some like, shit from it. Hats and stickers. I f- completely forgot about it but yeah lost was like my shit i was in when energy drinks first like hit the scene i would just mm-hmm. try everyone like bonds i, I missed the blue all. monster i never see the blue monster anywhere anymore yeah i remember specifically topical pit skate park in rockford was the first place i had monster like they got it first and it tasted way different this was when i was like 12 yeah maybe. it came out a long it time came ago out, and then it was like gone for a while i think there was some shit in it with that shouldn't have been in it and they had to take it and like reformulate it mm-hmm. and then it came back around at, at, like years later and i was like oh yeah that's the shit i drank at the pit like that was the only place to find it and like yeah i've been through some energy drinks like i'm gonna die young yeah <laughs> i don't know how we got onto this. i don't know how we got on oh because i don't i don't fucking remember <laughs> um a wingding yeah because we're talking wingding. about wingding yeah i caught a so heads up look up full 20 ounce or six whatever ounce bottle of vault hurled in the air because people are garbage i look up hits me square in the oh. face like someone you know over arch pitcher throwing a full just bottle drink. as high as you can i had a full gatorade thrown to me when i was riding my bike around town when i was a kid so yeah i've been there i also when i was 15 at wingding when it was still at davis park shout out <laughs> a, a grown man in front of me uh turned around and was like drunk as shit had two beers and he's like i had a beer for my friend but i can't find him do you want it at 15 and i was like of course i want I this beer and i want to carefully drink it because i know my parents are somewhere but then that day turned into some crazy shit and my dad flipped out and i couldn't live at home anymore fun facts fun times life doesn't get dark does it i drank a beer at wingding i paid so dearly for that beer there is so much therapy to unpack there i don't even want to begin i want to tell you that story because it wow we'll do it in post yeah we got a couple stories for post it sounds like long post (laughs) forty thousand dollars guys forty thousand dollars and you can get the post episode come on it's just waiting for you guys so yeah (laughs) wingding shout out to fucking wingding my dad said he would buy me a ticket but only if i got the lawn mode at my mom's house which was a perplexing deal to me because he didn't live there Um, who was performing at wingding do you recall um, the big one that I was stoked for that year was Theory of a Dead Man, because okay. that's when I was deep into my radio rock phase as a young man. Um, you know, I was singing, well, it ain't no surprise. And I was like, yeah, this song fucking rocks. These guys are the best. <laughs> Taking my acoustic guitar at home and like playing the shitty bar chord version <laughs> I found on <laughs> ultimateguitar.com. <laughs> the tab. Just sitting at home. the tab. And like my, the, our computer in my house growing up was right. It was in the living room. So like, here's m- like, you know, my mom and sister trying to watch TV and me as an angry, greasy 14 year old <laughs> with an acoustic guitar. Well, there ain't no surprise. Which it's hard to play with Shut buckets on your hands. <laughs> um, but so he was like, well, I'll buy you that wingding ticket, but you got to get that whole lawn mode. So I was trying to get it done as quickly as possible, being a lazy piece of shit teenager. Oh, yeah. And the um, my mom's house is on the corner of the street. And when you go down the street. To my Full government house, streets. God damn it. It's a it's a ditch. There's a ditch on the corner. And we and we were responsible for taking care of the ditch. It wasn't like a county thing where they usually do it because yeah. like it was on our property. They told you, get the ditch. Yeah, they said, get the ditch. <laughs> get um, the ditch. But then sometimes I would just let it go. Shit, shot you in the ditch. But then sometimes i would just let it get really really long and ridiculous and like not do it in the city would just come do it anyway and i'm like that's right you come do it um but so instead of going the long way like this like back and forth which would have been the safe way to do it i was just going up and down in a very (laughs) steep (laughs) thing being like well this is getting the job done much quicker and i don't have to like hold the this whole fucking lawnmower up at an angle it's brilliant um and so I was. it was towards the end of the ditch. And I was getting to the very end where it got very steep. The grass was very long. It was very wet. And uh, fun fact, the fresh cut grass smell is actually a pheromone that grass, that grass releases when it's in trouble. Yeah, I read it makes ladies horny. 
Really? Yeah, I don't know if that's true. There's got to be seem true. There's got to be a way to test this. I've I never think it makes ladies woman. horny when you're like ripped and you have your shirt off mowing. Yeah, when you're like a good-looking, muscly man, yeah. but not the smell of fresh cut grass. Me, shirt off, mowing the lawn. Cops are instantly like, oh. the co- in- like it's like one of those things where it's like, well, maybe I can drive on my suspended license, yeah. <laughs> and you just back out of your driveway and woo woo, <laughs> and they're just like, yeah, that's pretty much what it's like. <laughs> so I was going back and forth and back and forth, and then my I was wearing a pair of Chuck Taylors Converse. Of um, very thin perfect, shoes, perfect mowing material, very thin shoes with no grip slipped under the mower. And my laziness did save me a bit in this instance. Cause I was going to sharpen the blade before <laughs> I mowed that day, but I was like, God, I just want to get this ticket for wing ding. And so <laughs> the little things, oh, it's the life. little things that make it worth it, you know? And so foot under the mower. I remember I can smell the grass. I can feel the sun. I can close my eyes and see it. And I just, <laughs> just like birds flew away and stuff. Yeah. It tore off the whole front of my shoe and there was just blood squirting out. <laughs> and I was like, well, this is bad. And so I hobbled into the house. My mom was sleeping off a of migraine. My sister was just like doing something and I like kicked in the door and I was like, ah, ah, just hollering and squirting blood everywhere. And my sister's like, ah, ah. that's not the only time I'd ever done that. Yeah, of course. Well, because there was one time um, we had at one time in my life, we had four dogs when I was growing up and one of them ran away in the middle of winter. And I was chasing this dog down at like two in the morning because I was on like Christmas break, chased him down, came back. And while I was gone chasing this dog my sister had gotten up and was on the computer and so i like threw open the sliding door and threw the dog inside it was like because i was like covered in like frozen mud and bullshit and she was like ah! <laughs> my mom woke up she's like what happened i was like oh the the dog ran away and so i had ran out the house and this and now i'm covered in bullshit and uh Nay, she shouldn't have been on the computer so late. <laughs> it's not about me. This isn't about me. This is about her. Um, so woke my mom up, had the severity of the situation, got the shoe off. The toes weren't missing. That was the important Good. part. No I was toes. really hoping you were going to be like, yeah, that's why I have three toes. No, I have all of my toes, but... Um, what it did was it ripped off the entire toenail on my big toe. Ah, that's my thing. And, oh. and left just the crescent moon part of the nail that was, here's my toe. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Here's my toe. It was sticking up like that at like a 45 degree angle. And it gets worse. Nails are my thing. You heard what I can watch and deal with. Mm-hmm. And I cannot stand No, nails. this gets so much worse because we, oh, we, went to, we went to the hospital and they were like, okay, well, you know, the damage could have been much worse. And basically, the damage is done. it broke my toe. So now I can do this weird thing with my toe where it just keeps cracking no matter how many times I crack the I joint. I do that with a lot of my body. Yeah, weird. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, me too. <laughs> Shit, me too. Me hey. too. <laughs> um, and so the doctor was a very timid, small woman who got very... <laughs> and your foot was bigger than her? Pretty much. And so she was like, yep, that's pretty that's pretty fucked up. And I was like, you don't say. How many? How big are your student loan payments? <laughs> um, and so she said they were going to have... Trigger warning, kids. They were going to have to sew the crescent moon part back onto my toe so that the nail would grow back. Because if I, they didn't, it was just going to have no, t- no toenail there for the rest of my life. Just a toe with no toenail. Of course. Um... While I would, an important note here, exactly, is while I was on my way to the hospital, the quiet one. Yeah, come on, You're fucking ruining the show. <laughs> what happened was I had called my father and I was like, "Hey, I need that wing ding." ding I was it. like, "Hey, old buddy, not gonna get the lawn finished. Um, had a bit of an accident." <laughs> Um, a bit of a mishap. But it's pretty much a 90% done, and I still want to go to Wingding, so just let me know. So, you know, you get into the hospital, you got to turn your phone off and everything like that. And so I turned it back on when I left, and there was a voicemail. And while I was in the hospital, they sewed the crescent moon part back onto my toe, and they put a cast on it because my foot was broken, and was told that I had a had to put a sling on my foot and walk around with crutches, and I was not allowed to go to Wingding. <laughs> Per the doctor's the doctor orders. said that specifically. The doctor was like, well, I know you piece of shit. You're going to go to wing ding. Well, because I was like, yeah, I was just there. Like, well, I'm going to go to wing ding well, and do- show my boobs. Well, the doctor was like, what happened? And that was like this. And I was like, I was, I, I'm trying to get a ticket for wing ding, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, oh, you're not going to wing ding with this. And I was like, God 
damn it, because I had this plan to meet a girl at Wingding that of I course. had been talking to and was very excited. And that's why I was trying to get the we lawn done so I, could, so I could get the ticket, so I could tell her that I had the ticket and I was going to meet her at Wingding and it was going to be this big thing I had planned in my good. head. But and instead, instead of get it, meeting this girl, I got my foot ran over by a lawnmower. And as I was driving back from the ho- – well, wasn't driving. As I was being driven back from the hospital with my foot in a brace – uh, my dad had called and left a voicemail and said, no excuses, get the lawn done or no wingding ticket. And so I called back Solid. and I was like, my fucking foot's broken, asshole. I can't go to wingding anyway, so thanks a lot. And he was like, oh, well, you didn't say that in your <laughs> voicemail. And I was like, yeah, because I was on the way to the hospital with a bloody shoe. That girl should have gave you a sympathy over the pants hand job. Well, what ended up happening was I a sympathy over the hand over the hands. Do you know how pants nice job? that would have been? Over the hands. Oh pants my! Job. Over, over the that'll be, can that be the name of the episode? Yeah, the over, over the, the hands, hands pants, pants job. job. Yes, I fucking love I'm it. I'm excited. Well, I actually ended up calling that girl on the phone and I was like, "Hey, this is going to sound like a shitty cop out, but my foot went under a lawnmower <laughs> and I can't come to Wingding now." And she's like, "Really?" And I was like, "If I was going to lie and make an excuse to not come see you, don't you think I would have come up with a better lie than my foot went under?" lawnmower i was like do i need to text you pictures of my foot in this brace um and we actually ended up talking and hitting things off for a while so nice. i was reminded uh just now the wing ding where i got that free beer uh, a lot of women choose to display their breasts at wing ding for some reason and uh the math is there yeah. two plus two equals four minus one is three fast math exactly and uh, a very older woman decided to let hers out and i'd seen some boobs at that age these things fell out, and the whole crowd went, oh, <laughs> and someone goes, roll them back up, <laughs> and that sticks with oh, me Oh, and forever. that has to feel, that poor woman, she was just trying she to gave let, a shot. she was she, just trying I to let go to Buck them. Cherry, I can still and, and see instead those she was shamed for her disgusting milkers. Uh, also, real quick, I was reminded with the lawnmower thing, I worked at a call center for a popular phone company. Uh, we won't talk about it rhymes with p hobel <laughs> i love you know, p. Hobel. P. yeah my name's p hobel i, <laughs> I like, like nasty, nasty bitches. bitches uh so i took a phone call one time and it was someone wanting to upgrade their phone it was a woman and she was like yeah every year i get like the student loan check and i buy myself a phone it's like okay you know trying to make the small talk we are required to make and then i'm like well what happened to your last phone do you want to like try to trade it in or what did you have and she was like oh i had a g2 topical topical she was like um it's in a bag and i was like oh what did it get wet or what and she's like no it's in pieces and i was like well what happened and she was like well my brother had it and then he was mowing the lawn and i was like oh i know where this is going Mm -hmm. and i was like it fell under the mower and she's like yeah because he like the mower was messing up so he put it up against a tree like the handle up against the tree with the blade out on spinning and he was gonna he was calling me to come out and the phone fell into the blades and it proceeded to get crumbled but he made a quick grab for it and just shoved his arm into the mower and it cut his entire arm up and she was like so yeah the phone is fucked and i need a new phone sounds like your brother's pretty fucked yeah i was like uh just the phone and she's like he's he's figuring things out and i was like well, that's what you I'm say glad, about someone who's never gonna I'm have full to get use you of their into a sidekick again. three right now <laughs> so yeah oh, mowers are topical. crazy yeah mowers be wild i'm out glad here. i'm glad i remembered to bring that up because that was quite a story i remember there was a um a stephen king short story that he wrote called the lawnmower man which was made into a f- fairly shitty movie for what it's worth um, really? And it's about a guy who gets too lazy to want to mow his own lawn, so he calls a lawn mowing service in the uh, phone book. That's how old the story is. <laughs> called. <laughs> I had to think about what it was called. What, what, he didn't just look things? it up on Google. He looked it up. Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah. Looked it up in a phone book. Um, called like Pan's Mowing Service, mm-hmm. and it's the Greek god Pan who shows up with a magical lawnmower that starts mowing the lawn, and then. He walks behind the mower and eats the grass because he's like a goat god. And it describes that the uh, lawnmower runs over like a uh, mouse or like a ground squirrel or something like that. <laughs> this keeps going the whole time. You tell this <laughs> Wrap it up, B. Um, and it runs over this ground squirrel, chews it up, and the pan god eats the fucking squirrel that's chewed up by the grass. And he like stands up and there's just like grass juice and blood running down his face. And then the guy's like, yeah, I kind of don't want you to mow my lawn anymore. And he's like, well, that's not how it works. And then he has the lawnmower run over the old man and kill him. 
Stephen King really just L- shit out A anything. lot of coke. He was just writing down anything <laughs> that was just going to stick to the paper for what is – Lawnmower, pan, ancient god, eats the grass, kills your family. <laughs> like, yeah. Soul. There was a fucking story he wrote Jesus. about a haunted laundry machine where it's like – There was a lot of things the, Stephen King wrote there that was, shouldn't have There was one – no, anything. this one specifically, it happened because there was an ancient like New Guinean voodoo – thing that happened where like some blood got in the machine and like bone yeah. got in the machine because somebody accidentally dumped their jello in it one time on their sheets or something and oh it's yeah like, enough of these elements came together for this curse to happen that made this machine want to eat people and it's like of how course. like i understand that stephen king was like an in-demand author back then they were probably like steve come on crank these things yeah. out you know but like there's a level there's one where it's like cars come to life but they're not like cute cars or transformers they just run people over and they keep them hostage in a gas station and they just honk and honk and honk all right and we can we can night. stop with, uh, with there's his, just so many shitty stephen king stories that i can't even he's begin got to, quite a catalog uh, but yeah so that yeah that'll do you guys that was 16 uh this episode can drive a car yeah <laughs> look at us in two episodes we can buy cigarettes and porn The DapperDads.com, DapperDadsPodcast at gmail.com, 4027 Dapper. That's 402. Are we going to check on our surprise that we were supposed to do before the show? We'll just look at it after this. These yeah, that's fair. This no, they don't need Contact the us, submit to us, five star reviews, full government names. <laughs> yeah, as always, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for checking us out. We don't know how to ever end there. these fucking Little episodes. Light. Well, because I don't even know what we're doing on this fucking show anymore. I've At never this point, known what we're doing. No, nah, it's just a bunch of fucking bullshit. It's, um, yeah, it's just nothing. Yeah, you'll have to get this in the video component, folks. Which may but, not exist. Which may not exist because we can't get this shit figured out. This show is stressful and frustrating and I quit.